to my YouTube channel, The Space Between. Um, <clears throat> today I'm gonna go through a nurturing flow tutorial with you guys. Um, it's fairly early on a Saturday morning, not that early really. <laughs> um, and normally I'm teaching um, a yoga class, but um, I actually took the weekend off um, just because I've been so busy with other jobs at the moment um, and I just was like, I need some me time. Um, so, good news is I can do a few uh, videos for you guys to hopefully get a bit of a head start for the rest of the month of August, which I'm excited to share with you. So yeah, today we're going to do um, like a nurturing flow with a focus on Ajna Chakra, because that's um, the chakra that we've been exploring this month. If you want to know a little bit more about that chakra, check out the description box and I'll um, try to remember to leave some links below for my other videos. Um, so for the nurturing flow, it's going to be kind of like... A vinyasa flow but a bit slower. Gonna slow it down a, a notch. Um, this is actually really nice like I'm doing it first thing in the morning. I've just had like some lemon water and some water and just chilled out for a bit. Not set an alarm for the first time in so long. It felt amazing. Um, and But this is also a really nice thing to do like last thing at night. So I definitely would recommend it either like first thing in the morning or last thing at night giving yourself a little bit of nurturing. Um, you can use a block and straps, check out my DIY props video if you don't have access to those things. Um, and we're going to be holding the postures for a little bit longer than we um, do for some of the other um, videos I teach. And I also have some French lavender massage oil um, that I bought the other day from the body shop. Um, I just went in and I was like, I want, at the end of all my classes, when I'm teaching yoga, I give a little Thai head massage, which I absolutely love doing. And I was run, running really low on lavender spray and like an invigorating spray that I use. <clears throat> so the woman was like putting this on my hand and like, try this. And I was like, this is, feels amazing. Um, so I bought a bottle of that. And I can't remember the other one is, but it's a lime, it's a lime version. So that's kind of like a peppy one. And this one is like a chilled out one. So if you have access to like a spray or like some, a little bit of oil, this is really nice because it's not like super greasy. Um, I would definitely re recommend getting this, especially, honestly, for any class that you do at home, but especially for, like, a nurturing flow, because it feels so good at the end of class, especially if, like, it gets cold and you get, like, a blanket and you just massage your temples a little bit, or even better, if you've got, like, a partner or a, a best friend and they're willing to, like, give you a little head massage, maybe you could return the favour, and then just lie in Shavasana for, like, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, um, whatever feels good. It's just, ah, oh, it just adds like a little something extra. So yeah, highly recommend that. <laughs> anyway, um, as I always say at the beginning of my classes, um, <clears throat> on tutorials, I guess, um, please, like I'm not a doctor, so please just listen. If you have like any niggles that are getting quite painful throughout your practice, then just stop. Um, if you um, get short, sharp pains, it's best to just come out and lie lie down or take a child's pose um, and yeah just listen to your body and give it what it needs because if you're like pushing through pain you know we're like not at the gym um, and I wouldn't even really recommend doing that at the gym to be fair um, but yeah like just listen to your body and um, that way you can come back onto your yoga mat tomorrow or in a couple of days and feel good rather than like doing something damaging and not wanting to come back for a while so yeah, I think what we'll do is, guys, we'll begin with a, a little bit of a gentle body scan. Um, yeah, let's do that first. <laughs> Still half asleep, as you can tell. All right, then, so we're going to come to a, a, just a comfortable seated position. Um, you can have the legs, however feels good. Maybe you even want to be in a chair um, or like a little stool thing for this first bit. It's up to you. Um, Having the hands wherever feels comfortable, if, it, if you want them to be kind of like open, so like accepting energy, you can. If you want them to be a little bit closed off, more private, that's fine too. Um, however feels good. Today I think mine feel like this, because my wrists get a bit sore. Rolling the shoulder blades back and down. Straightening that spine, grounding down in the sit bones, but sitting up tall in your truth. And the chin is parallel to the floor. And you can just close your eyes. And we're just... <clears throat> Focusing on Ajna Chakra today, the center of the forehead, third eye, color is purple, 
element is light. I'm just going to bring some focus to the breath. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. I'm not trying to change the breath, just exploring where it's at right now. Okay. I'm going to start at the crown of the head. I'm just going to do a gentle body scan. Um, you can have it as like um, you can have it as like honey trickling down, or you can have it as a ray of light. Um, the other day in class I used honey, but I think today let's do um let's do a purple ray of light, yeah, because Ashna Chakra is purple. Let's have it as like a purple beam or light, whatever feels good. And we're gonna start that that purple light at the crown of the head. And we're just gonna gently scan down the eyes, the nose the ears, all the way around the back of the head, cheekbones and chin and lips, the jawline and the tongue. Just scanning and seeing where it's at right now. Scanning the neck. I'm not trying to change any discomfort if we have some in our neck or our shoulders. Continue now to focus the purple light on the left side, left side, left right, left side, right, right, left side of the shoulders. Such a goofball. Um, on the left side of the shoulder, the left shoulder, even sort of. The left shoulder, and we're going to scan down the arm towards the left elbow. Scanning down toward the left wrist. Scanning the wrist and the thumb all the way to the tips of the fingers on the left hand. Bringing the attention this time to the right shoulder. And scanning that purple light down the right shoulder towards the right elbow. Continue scanning down the forearm, the wrist, the thumb, all the way to the tips of the fingers on the right side. I'm not trying to change anything, just checking in. <clears throat> Bringing the attention to the chest now. Scanning that purple light down the chest all around the ribs, all down the spine, down towards the belly and the hips. And just take a moment to take your left hand and put it on your chest and take your right hand and put that on your stomach, on your belly. And again, without trying to change the breath, just checking in and seeing where your breath is. Maybe you're doing some nice deep belly breaths. Maybe you're doing some short, sharp breaths up more in your chest. And that's absolutely fine. We're not trying to change anything. Just bring in some awareness to where the breath is in our body and how deep our inhales and exhales are. Good, releasing the hands. Bring in the attention to the left hip. Taking that purple body scan and scanning it down the left hip, the left buttocks, the left thigh, all the way down to the left knee. Continue scanning down that left knee, down the left leg, to the ankle, the heel of the foot, scanning that purple light all along the sole of the foot, right the way to the toe pads. Just checking in, seeing where we're at this morning and today. Bringing the attention this time to the right side, envisaging, envisaging that purple light, scanning down the leg, the buttocks, all the way down that right leg, towards the knee, towards the ankle. 
You want to make it your own. So I'm going to flip all the way to the tips of those two pads. <clears throat> and in your own time, just gently fluttering open the eyelids. It's probably going to be quite light in your room, so it's a little while that's going to be some extra stimulus. Oh, maybe you feel a little bit more relaxed already. I love doing that at the beginning of a yoga class because I still sometimes get nervous teaching and it just makes me calm. And if you're doing it in a class, or maybe you're doing it at home with your family, which is lovely, or your partner or a friend, um, it just kind of puts you a little bit more on the same wavelength and just relaxes you a bit more as well. Okay, so we're going to do um, some Nadi Shadana technique next. Um, I will again link a video below. <clears throat> so I did just a, a short video on this after work the other week. So this is great for unblocking subtle energy channels um, and it really helps to relax the mind. Um, and there are so many more benefits to it um, that are in that other video. So I won't harp on about it now. <laughs> so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to use my right hand because I'm right handed. If it gets uncomfortable at any point, feel free to just hold it, yeah? So you're not kind of dragging down the body. Again, we're trying to keep that spine straight, hips nice and grounded, mm -hmm. shoulder blades back and down. And then bring the, whatever hand you use, I'm gonna use my right hand. And you're gonna, we're begin, blah, 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 we're gonna be using our thumb and our um, ring finger for this. So I can't like have my baby finger down at the same time, it just goes a bit weird on my hand. So just having the forefinger and the middle finger down. And we're gonna use our thumb and we're gonna put our thumb on our right nostril. And this is why my voice goes a bit funny. <laughs> so we're gonna put our thumb on our right nostril and we're gonna be inhaling. I do it to the count of six because that's, that's what feels good for me. You could do eight, you could play around. Um, sometimes if I've been doing a lot of meditation and pranayama and yoga, my breath is, I'm able to do it for longer and it's not uncomfortable. Whatever feels good, guys, I'm going to cue for six, okay? So the count of six, so we're breathing in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to use our other finger to retain. Release, two, three, four, five, six. It's coming out of my right nostril this time. Then I'm going to inhale through the right nostril. So inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Retain. Release left, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's like a full round, okay? So I think what the best idea is for me to do is I'm gonna guide you for the first round and then we're just gonna take a few minutes to do a couple of rounds on our own. Of course, you can pause this video at home. If you wanna do some extra rounds, that's great. Um, this is a really nice thing to try and do for a good five minutes. I'm just mindful I don't want this video to be super long so um, we'll just do a round together where I'll speak and then we'll just do a couple of rounds on our own okay so remember bringing that um, right thumb to the right nostril to close it off closing the eyes inhaling through the left nostril one two three four five six close exhale right two three four five Inhale, right, two, three, four, five, six, close. Exhale, left, two, three, four, five, six. On your own, guys, so inhaling through that left nostril. Exhale,
Feeling whenever you reach the end of that round, just release the hands, closing the eyes. And once more, we're going to bring our left hand to our chest, right hand to our belly. Just seeing where the breath is. And the more you practice Nadi Shadana, it's really nice to try and breathe really deep into the belly. And I'll be doing um, a video on the three, three tiered breath, three level breath, um, like a deep breathing exercise um, later in, uh, in the course. But yeah, we just want to try and be breathing nice and deep into our bellies. Um, a yoga teacher I once had, keep an eyes closed, I'll just tell you this. A yoga teacher I once had um, explained to me about how <clears throat> when babies are asleep, they just allow, you know, their, their little bellies go really big when they're taking out their breath. And I think, especially in the world these days, we have a lot of pressure to like not have those big full belly breaths. Um, so we're kind of trying to suck everything in and keep it all tight. Um, but this is, you know, it means that our breath is just really stuck up in our chest and we're not making the use of where, it, where else it needs to go. So, yeah, just thinking of like a baby sleeping, if that helps, having those nice deep belly breaths. In through the nose and out through the nose and just seeing where your breath is now. Maybe you've noticed it's a bit deeper than it was at the beginning of class. This is lovely. This means it's working. <laughs> Right, gently flutter the eyelids open, drop in the hands. <clears throat> okay. All right, so let's see this time. I'm going to just begin by gently warming up the body. So I'm going to bring my hands up, I'm going to clasp them. I'm going to stretch. Oh, maybe like work out some niggles if that feels good. Trying to not keep the, what's that, my shoulders <laughs> by my ears. Just lowering them a little bit, keeping that space. But still stretching up nice and strong. Yeah, maybe you want to take it to the right side. Doing some clicks. Maybe you want to take it to the left side. One more time. Let's hold it a little bit longer this time. Inhale. Exhale. Left side. Good. Um, let's plant that right hand. I'm going to swing the left hand up and over. Reach into the side. Maybe you want to bring the gaze up. Tilt that chin. Rolling the shoulder out. Exhale a little bit deeper. Good. And let's repeat on the other side. Reaching over. And stretch. Good. Planting that hand. Let's do one more on each side. And the other side. Good, okay. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna just bring our right arm over so that our fingers are sort of clasping our chin very gently. We're just gonna maybe take the gaze up. It's gonna find a little sweet spot in the neck. So just almost gently massaging, rotating. Finding that sweet spot where we're just getting rid of any tension along the side of the neck. Good, gently release. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Just finding that sweet spot. Nice and gentle. Good, and then gently releasing. Okay. All we're going to do is take our hands and we're going to clasp them behind our back. This time, I naturally go this way with my clasp, so I'm going to unclasp and go sort of like the odd way, the way I wouldn't normally clasp my hands. And really just stretch them out a little bit so the arms are nice and long, chest is coming forward. Taking some deep breaths here. Really begin to open out the chest. Straining that spine. Heart is wide open. Good. 
Good. And let it fly out to the side. This time we're going to stretch those arms up and we're going to exhale, come forwards. And what I'm going to do is I'm really going to grip my, my um, fingertips into the floor. And I'm going to pull my shoulders back. I'm going to walk a little bit. So I'm inhaling, straighten that spine, chest is coming forward, heart is nice and fearless. Exhale, oh, I come a little bit deeper. <laughs> Try not to fall. Right. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, a little bit deeper. Good, and slowly walking it back. I'm going to bring my hands now to to my knees, but being quite gentle, maybe sort of the fleshy, fleshy bit around the knees rather than the knees themselves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of think of myself like I'm an ocean or I'm a bit of a wave. And I'm going to inhale, I'm going to roll my chest to the right. And on the exhale, I get to the center. On the exhale, I'm rolling back around. Okay, so inhale, rolling. In, exhale, rolling back. Two more times at your own pace. Nice. And I'm just going to bring my hands forward. I'm going to inhale, stretch that spine. Exhale, curl it. A little bit like when we do um, cat cow which you'll see in a minute if you haven't done it before. Good, okay, come to centre, but we're doing it seated instead. <clears throat> Swap the legs around, so whatever leg is in front, oh, it feels good to just stretch. <laughs> My legs are so, st so stiff this week, I'm teaching extra classes. All right, so whatever leg was in front or on top, I'm just gonna reverse that. You might find that one side's tighter than the other, that's completely normal guys, don't worry about it. All right, once again, we're gonna clasp our hands. This time we're gonna do it um, the normal way. So however you normally clasp your hands, clasping them behind the back and stretching them out and back. Mm, feel that stretch. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> nice, stretching out on a Saturday morning feels so good. Maybe doing it on a Sunday morning. I feel like this would be a really nice class for a Sunday morning. Oh, a natural flow on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Can have some easy light Sunday morning playing on in the background. <gasps> Hello. <laughs> All right, we're gonna release the hounds. <laughs> we nearly said release the hounds, release the hounds, Smithers. I feel like I have to just quote Mr. Burns in every one of my classes for some reason, I don't know why. Anyway, shush, so sure. <laughs> we're gonna inhale and pull and exhale, release. At least I can laugh at me and jokes, right guys? And feel that stretch. I can feel a really nice stretch along my back thigh, but there's no pain in my knees, so just being very gentle with yourself. Good, and slowly coming back. All right, once again, I'm going to bring my hands to just below my knees. This time I'm going to go the other way, so I'm going to go to my left. Inhale, I'm dropping. When I get to the center, exhale, coming all the way back. Really trying to ground those knees and ground our sit bones. Two more at your own pace. Roll in with the breath. And come to centre when you're ready. Okay, lovely. All right, let's, she says, getting her notes so she remembers what she's doing. Um, yeah, okay, so we're going to do, yeah, we're going to come on now to our knees. <laughs> Maybe have a little bit of a stretch out, getting any, rid of any niggles. I've had a few knee pains this week, so I'm going to bear that in mind for my practice today, because like I always say, guys, listening to your body is really important. Um, let's begin with um, a child's pose. So we're going to come to a wide-legged child's pose. So. I'm going to bring my knees to the width of my mat. My big toes are going to have a little kiss. Here we are. And I'm going to come, actually I'm going to wiggle a bit further back on my mat. Yeah. And then I'm going to lean in, lean in, ground down really, into my sit bones, coming back. And my forehead is going to go on my mat. My hands are nice and spread. 
my arms are not limp and static they're nice and strong and activated i'm be rocking the head from side to side stimulating ajna chakra a little bit now remembering that the color of ajna chakra is purple that the, ele the element of ajna is light and um, some affirmations i guess would be um, i see i know um, to perceive and if you want to take a moment here to set your intention, now would be a lovely time to do that. So maybe you want to have some more clarity. Um, maybe you want to have some more focus when you're in challenging asanas, challenging postures. Um, maybe you want to just leave any worries or niggles or anxieties um, just out of your outside of your mat today and just allow yourself um, 45 minutes to an hour of just relaxing and coming back to yourself kind of getting centered again so whatever your intention is and it doesn't have to be ajna chakra related feel free to set one now and then throughout the practice today coming back to the breath or if the mind is wandering just smile and then just come back to your intention okay this is a really great practice for off the yoga mat as well of course all right then guys so i want to gently come up and what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> I'm going to keep my knees quite wide and I'm going to drop my hips to the right. I'm actually, I'm going to bring my knees in a little bit, but whatever feels comfortable for you. I'm going to drop to the right. And once again, I'm inhaling. When I get to the center, I'm exhaling. I'm going to bring it back into child's pose, either wide leg or you can do a slightly uh, narrow leg like myself, okay? Wherever your knees feel comfortable. Inhale, drop to the right. Exhale, all the way back. Two more, you're in pace. And the other way, inhale, drop into the left. Trying to make those circles, exhale back, a little bit bigger each time. Two more. my knee clicking. <laughs> Sounds healthy. Good. And then let's come to a mutual tabletop. Let's just do a few cat cows. So we're going to inhale. Tilt the pelvis, bring the chin up, exhale, looking down. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, down. Two more times. And bring your nose shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, down. And on the way down, really pushing those hands into the lap. Okay. All right then, guys, I'm just checking my notes. So what I want to do with you guys next. Mm, okay, so I think what we'll do next is we're gonna come and come down in with, with a look, we're gonna come down with an easy vinyasa. So my my hips are just gonna drop forwards and I'm gonna slowly roll my body down. And I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna come up into stinks. Just making sure you can see me. Yeah, try and keep that gaze forward. Okay, and I'm going to come onto my elbows. My hands are nice and spread. And maybe you want to rotate elbows, um, ankles a little bit. That's fine too. Planting um, my toes so that they're really grounding down into the mat. Okay, this activates my legs. So if you look at my feet right now and I relax them like this, and then I decide to just ground them, all of my um, legs are activated, but also my lower back is much better protected, okay? So even if you want to try that, relax the feet and then ground down those toes, roll the shoulder blades back, lifting, chest is coming out, chin can tilt up if it feels good, okay? Closing the eyes, taking a breath here. Then, if you want to, you can even come up into Cobra. So we're going to bring the hands back a little bit. My elbows are nice and tight towards my body. And I'm just going to lift 
a little bit. But again, my hips are grounded down. My toes are grounded down. Slowly rolling down. Let's do a couple of cobra rolls. So rolling up, maybe even onto your fingertips and rolling down. Inhale up. Good. Okay. Now this time I'm going to plant my hands down and I'm going to lift my whole body up, my tailbone up and I'm going to curl my toes under and I'm going to come into a downward facing dog. Okay. If you want to keep the knees nice and bent then you can. Elbows can be a little bit bent too if that feels good. I'm going to walk the dog so just stretching out, pedaling out the feet. Okay, I'm going to take an easy vinyasa here. So once again, I'm going to dip and drop my knees. Maybe wriggle the hands out a bit further so I can just gently roll the hips down. And then ground and down and climb back up. I'm just going to move a little bit further back on my mat so I don't hit my head on the wall. Then if you like, so you can even take it back into child's pose. Curl the toes under, down the facing dog. Okay, so let's work on those to get them a little bit smoother. So, let's do two more. We're going to bend at the knees. My hips drop forward. My body rolls down. My body rolls up. Taking it back into child's. Curling the toes, lifting that tailbone into downward facing dog. Okay, one more vinyasa. Bend those knees. Allowing the body to come down. Those of you that have practiced before, you can take a full vinyasa chaturanga, whatever feels good for you. I'm just doing more of a gentle one today because it is a nurturing flow class. Good. And then you're going to step or hop to the front of your mat. It's still warming up, so whatever feels good. Right, I'm going to try and keep my back straight. So if you have a cushion or something here to use as support for your hands, that's great. Even though I'm feeling quite tight because it is um, first thing in the morning, which is absolutely fine. And we're just going to do a forward fold. So try not to, to bend the spine. If you have a little micro bend in your knees, that's fine too. Just don't lock the knees, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to inhale, come up to the shins, look up. Exhale, a little bit deeper. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, a little bit deeper. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, a little bit deeper. Okay. I'm going to step back into our downward facing dog. I'm going to take a vinyasa. Another one. Knees go down. Then you can bring that body down. time. Okay, join me in downward dog. And then when you're ready, once more, you can step or hop to the front of your mat. Let's keep those knees nice and um, bent. And we're going to bend the knees and we're going to slowly roll up. Good. We're going to take the hands, interlace them, just bring them back. Closing the eyes, bringing the focus to Ajna Chakra, to perceive, to know. Release the hands, come into a bit of a bend here. In fact, actually what we'll do is, sorry guys, we'll bring the hands to the hips and we'll bend from the hips, okay? 
Again, in my forward fold. If the hands are down, that's fine. If you're using a cushion, that's also fine. Whatever feels good. Trying to keep that spine nice and straight. Okay, I'm gonna bring, I've just got, sorry guys, I'm just moving a bit further forward on my mat <clears throat> so you guys can see. So I'm gonna come into a bit of a lunge this time. So, stepping back with my right leg, planting the hands down so they're framing my uh, left foot. And again, I'm keeping an eye out so that my knee isn't going over my ankle. I'm trying to stack it or allow it to be a bit further back, whatever feels good. Okay, point in the hips. Really nice guys, just have a little have a little moment here. Maybe you want to play around with your balance a little bit. Maybe you want to add in a back bend, whatever is feeling good for you right now. Just play around with that. Okay. I'm gonna release that back knee. I'm gonna do a little hip vinyasa here. So I'm gonna rock back, straighten my body, straighten my spine. And I'm gonna try, my, I have a tendency to allow my hips to rock out. So we're really gonna try to keep the hips square. Okay, face and forward. So I find this quite challenging. And let's move through. So again, my front knee is um, bent here. I'm going to bring my hands up. Or if it feels good, you could bring them to the back. Okay, whatever feels nice. You can leave them here. Those are your options, okay? Release to the mat. Rocking it back. Trying to keep that spine straight. If you want to get a little bit lower, then you can. Like I say, I'm trying to keep my hips square. <laughs> if I go lower, I have a tendency to roll all the way out. So I'm trying to be mindful of that. Planting once more, lifting up. Focusing here on opening up those shoulders. I'm not trying to bend from my lower back, okay? Planting the hands. One more time, I'm going to keep my hands out this side, I think, this time. Good. I'm going to bring my hands to the inside of that front foot, and I'm going to move it so that my toes are facing the outer corner, uh, sorry, the front corner of my mat, okay? And then this time, if I like, I can stay in this position. Or, if it's available to me, to play with it a little bit, we're going to slowly come down onto our hands. I'm just trying to check my alignment for you guys. So again, I'm trying to keep my hips, um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm trying to keep my hips. I'm trying to keep my, I'm trying to keep my hip, sorry, I'm trying to allow my hips to stretch, but I'm keeping my knees from getting damaged. So if there's any pain when you're here, there should be no pain in the knees, okay? So it's just taking a play with it. Maybe you need to bring that foot a bit further forward or a bit further back, whatever feels good. You can use a block here as well to put your elbows on. So you can put um, some um, blocks underneath your elbows for this one. Okay. When you're ready, you're gonna come onto the hands. I'm gonna tilt, so that front foot is gonna come onto the edge, the outer edge of the foot. I'm gonna ground down with my right leg and I'm gonna come up in a bit of a twist with my left arm. Good. Ground it down. This time I'm going to move it so that my foot is facing forward. And I'm going to check my notes because I can't remember what I said to do here. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to actually bring my, sorry, curl my back toes under. Sorry guys, I'm new to this flow myself, so I'm just trying to remember what I actually put. Um, curl my back toes. And I'm going to step up. So I'm, I'm quite buoyant again in my hips. I'm going to step that front foot back. I'm going to take a moment to have a little stretch in my hips in whatever version of a, of a downward facing dog I feel I need to do. I'm gonna take a nice vinyasa, so I'm gonna bring my knees down, my hips are gonna come forwards, rolling down, grounding down those toes, coming into cobra, coming back into child's pose. Just take a moment here in child's. Coming back to the breath. Curl the toes under, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Step or hop to the front of the mat. 
And we're just going to have a second here in our forward fold. And again, if you want to take some little vinyasas, inhale, look it up. And exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. This time I'm going to bring my left leg back. <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. Um, quite buoyant in the hips. Again, you can play around with it a little bit. Just let's try not to fall over. <laughs> okay, coming down. Bringing that back knee down. Maybe I'm going to wriggle out that foot a little bit. And we're going to stretch out that front leg. Coming up. And again, I'm, once again, I'm playing around, trying to keep my hips square. I do have such a tendency to roll mine out. Oh, that felt so good, it just cracked. Um, but we're not trying to do that right now. Okay. And again, coming up. I need to play around, just play around with the foot. I'm trying to keep my alignment good for you guys as well. Again, I'm stacking. I'm going to come back this time. If you're, if you're deepening that stretch into your hip, that's fine. But make sure the stretch is coming from your hip. It's not just your lower back flopping down. I think that's something that's really tempting to do in this posture. Um, and we're not trying to put pressure on the lower back. So even if you need to be up here, just playing around with where the hip feels good. Plant in the hands and straighten. And again, you could use blocks here, guys. If you don't have that flexibility, it's not, not a problem. Please just use some blocks if you need to. Hold it a little bit longer down this time. Then bring it forward once more. This time I'm going to bring my hands to the inside of my foot. My front toe, my front toes, my toes of my right foot are going to face the front corner of my mat. And again, I'm going to release that back foot a little bit. And again, if I want to, oh, so nice. <laughs> I'm going to come down onto my elbows. And I do this as well, so I'm telling you guys now, try to straighten that spine and try not to curl into this posture. I find as soon as I lower down, I instantly want to curl. So I'm really trying to work at not doing that. So even if you need to use a block, but keeping that back straight, trying to push the chest forward. I know I'm feeling really stiff today, but I'm kind of glad because I guess if you're really, if you're a beginner to it, I feel like I'm catching the problems that might, or the challenges that might arise in this practice so that's okay all right so when you're next ready to exhale come onto the hands come onto the outer corner edge of that foot outer edge of that foot even sorry and bring the right leg up good we're going to plant the hands so it's framing that front leg curl that back toe under stepping back into downward facing dog here working out any niggles before we take any vinyasa here, so easy vinyasa. Coming up into downward dog. Okay, we're gonna bounce the knees. One, two, three, and then we're gonna jump forward. So we've got one, two. Three, and let's bounce it forward for my favorite yogi squat. So I'm actually gonna come and face you guys <clears throat> for this bit, a bit easier. So playing around with the um, width of the feet. If you're on your heels, oh, sorry, if you're on your toes, that's fine, okay? Whatever you can manage today. And then what I'm doing is, every time I inhale, I'm straightening my spine a little bit. I might even need to play around with it here. I feel so stiff today. Every time I inhale, I'm straightening my spine. I'm trying to just also tilt my bum a little bit towards the floor. And every time I exhale, I'm pushing not the knees, but like the fleshy bit underneath the knees. I'm pushing them back a little bit with my elbows, trying to straighten that spine. It's so weird, because normally when I do this, I'm in, a, I'm in a hot yoga class, so I'm a lot more open. And it's quite interesting doing it just in my room because it's a little, I'm a little bit stiffer. That's okay. 
and close the eyes. Take a few breaths. do is <clears throat> we're gonna take an inhale and come up to standing okay and then the exhale we're gonna come back down two more times inhale exhale inhale and exhale okay I'm gonna come to where you guys will be so you'll probably be at the front of your mat now <clears throat> And what we're going to do is we're going to bring those hands forward and we're just leaning and we're slowly, 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 coming onto our bum. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to play around a little bit here with boat pose. <clears throat> there are so many variations of this. If you guys want to challenge yourselves, you can. I feel like if you want to challenge yourselves, you probably already have a bit more of a yoga practice. So <laughs> you probably know the variations. I'm going to stick with a more chilled out version of this. Rolling the shoulders back, trying to balance on the um, sit bones a little bit. So just playing around with that. We're trying to keep the spine nice and straight. My toes are pointing on the floor. I'm going to bring them up. I can come out like so. I could come into full boat or I could come into, normally I love this one, but I think I'm a bit stiff today. Sometimes I tend to do this one. Keeping, oh, it feels good actually, keeping my spine straight. So wherever you're at, I'm gonna just do a, a, like a beginner version. So let's just do the easiest version. If you still find this challenging, that's totally fine, guys. Pulling that chest forward. Even if you want to, you can close eyes and focus on Ajna Chakra. Purple light. Maybe you want to do some toe taps, one, two, together, one, two, together. Focus on Ajna. Ajna like a big purple light. When you're a boat and you can see all the sea around you is purple. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to rock it out a little bit. I hope I've got enough space for this. I'm actually going to release my boat and wiggle forwards a little bit, guys, just because. I'm in a bit of a nook in my room. I'm going to rock it out. So I'm just going to rock. If it feels good for you guys, you can practice seeing if you can get your feet over your head. And again, I'm actually going to come a bit further forward just because of my angles. Yeah. And if you feel like it's comfortable, you can actually come back. And what I'm really doing is opening up my shoulders here. So I'm really coming onto my shoulders and not to my neck, okay? So my neck isn't in pain. My feet are down. Try and stay strong and active in the toes. And then just release it, okay? So just really gently, just finding that sweet spot and releasing. We're not trying to hold it for ages today. We're just seeing how it feels, okay? When I'm really coming up. So when we do halasana or plow pose, eventually I'll be clasping the hands and my shoulders are really protecting my neck, so that I'm putting no weight on my neck, okay? We're just playing around with it today, getting the feet back. Especially if you're new. If you already have a practice, feel free to hold Halasana for a moment here. If you don't, just do what I'm doing, rock it out with me, okay? And then, when you're ready on your last rock, just gotta move a bit right away, you're just gonna gently release into your mat. So releasing the tailbone, and just relax the body. Chill out a little bit here for a moment. Okay? So like I said, if you have a practice already of yoga, that's fine. That's lovely. And you can hold halasana. If you don't, just do what I did. Rock it out a little bit. Maybe you want to do this video a couple of times over the next month or two or whatever. And maybe each time you, um, you might be better able to hold it. I will be doing more of a breakdown of that posture in another video. So don't worry about it for now. It's totally fine. All right, and then what we're gonna do is, whew, let's um, 
Let's release the left leg still and bring the right leg up. Um, actually, what should I do? Yeah, actually, I'm going to do this version. Sorry, so bringing the hands behind the right thigh. I'm just going to very gently pull my right thigh. Sorry, my right thigh. Well, yeah, pull my right thigh. So my knee is coming towards my right armpit. Flexing that foot. You can even use a strap here if that feels good. Just holding it here for a moment. Releasing any tension. Okay. And then just gently bring in that knee over to the left side. I'm feeling that twist. You can always bring the chin to the right a little bit as well. I'm trying to ground down those shoulders as well. Oh, that's so nice. Such a nice twist. Almost like you're wringing out a dirty dish cloth. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I love a good twist. Okay, gently come back to the centre. We're going to release that right foot this time and bring the left foot in. I'm going to try and do this. I'm near a wall, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Okay, gently bring in, not, not tugging at the knee, just sort of putting pressure gently on the thigh. Flexing that left foot, trying to bring it towards the left armpit a little bit. And then slowly we're going to release it down. <laughs> Try not to hit the wall. And put this other arm wherever feels good. Again, just trying to ground down on my shoulder a little bit. Feeling a nice stretch all along the side body here. Good, and then gently releasing coming up. You do a bit of a happy baby here if it feels good. Just holding on. Allowing the knees to come to the, uh, to the armpits. You're rocking or whatever if it feels good. Give yourself a little back massage, closing the eyes, bringing the attention to Ajna Chakra, centre of the forehead. Slowly releasing the hands and gently coming up. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll bring our hands, sorry, our fingers so they're facing towards our feet. And we'll just gently lift, good little hip lift, releasing any tension. You can top the chin or you can really play around with the neck a little bit, whatever feels good. Gently release. And then I think we'll just do the last two closing postures, postures. straightening those feet, bringing the arms up. And we're coming up and over, trying to keep that spine nice and straight. If you're here, that's absolutely fine. Wherever you are, again, you could use a strap around the feet. Slowly release it. This time allow the feet to point a little bit and we're going to allow the spine to bend. So it's still going to come up and over. But this time I'm letting my hands drop. Or you can surrender with an open palm if you like. And I'm allowing my spine to curl. I'm just letting gravity do its thing. curling up okay now if you want to if you've got your spray or an oil just take a little bit on the fingers have a nice smell of it so good and just bring some to your temples maybe even like into your head giving yourself a little head massage
They're nice temples. Maybe even along the neck. Just working out any kinks. Just take a moment to thank yourselves for giving yourself a little bit of TLC. Sometimes in this busy world it's really hard to do that without feeling guilty. So maybe just as you're releasing any tension, you're also just really releasing any, any sense of guilt. And just gently reminding ourselves that we can't pour from an empty cup. So if we're not taking care of ourselves, it's very hard to give to other people. And I think great lives is all about giving, you know, with, with healthy boundaries, don't get me wrong, but just giving. All right, and then when you're ready, as always, so you can use a blanket as well if it's cold and you want to get snuggly, you can. I'm pretty hot right now. <laughs> you can just allow your feet to just drop to the outer corner edges and then really playing around those shoulders a little bit as well. So I'm wriggling up my shoulders and then releasing my hands. So my hands might come out quite far. Closing the eyes, enjoying that scent of lavender. Maybe once again, bring in the the left hand to heart, the right hand to the belly. And now, just breathing normally, now just seeing where your breath is. And you may surprise yourself, it may be a much deeper belly breath this time. And when you're ready, allowing the hands to drop to the sides, making sure you stay in Shavasana for at least five minutes. If you have longer, that's perfect, it's really nice, but five minutes is fine. I'm just gonna bring my hands to the heart center and say namaste to you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. May it be of benefit. May you leave your mat a little bit lighter and a little bit more focused. And I hope this leads into the rest of your day or weekend or week. Live light. Thank you guys.